based upon the evidence of, of force used, a deadly force used by some of the people who were present against the deputies, uh, that I think this entire incident was handled very professionally. At a news conference, the sheriff displayed some of the rocks and bottles that were allegedly thrown at his deputies. But he grew angry when told that neighbors were not backing up his version of what happened. I'm not going to debate the issue. I've got 10 injured deputies. We've got rocks and bottles and the missiles that injured them. And I'm not going to debate the issue as to whether it happened or not. It happened. 15 sheriff's deputies needing medical attention. These people were uh, resisting the lawful orders. The next step in the case, criminal charges filed against seven people, all Samoan Americans, accused of attacking the deputies. Among the defendants, Emily Doles, better known to professional wrestling fans as Mount Fiji. This was a mob, and these were very large people. Many of them, most of them were 250 to 290 pounds, and they were something to be reckoned with. Fifteen deputy sheriffs suffered injuries that night, nine serious enough to require uh, medical attention. The case has become a cause celeb in the Samoan community and elsewhere because of this home video shot by a neighbor of the Dole family. Sheriff Block said the tape was shot after partygoers triggered the brawl by attacking deputies. Block in turn displayed photographs of his deputies battered in the melee. But the Dole family also has photographs of partygoers allegedly beaten by lawmen. Beatings the family charges were unprovoked. The officers saw these large Samoans and they reacted improperly. It is not a crime to be large. That is a God-given quality of these people and they should not be persecuted because of it. Mark Coogan, Channel 7. This is unbelievable. Arthur Dole said his hand is swollen from the handcuffs. At a news conference, his daughter showed the dark bruises on their limbs. But they say the most badly beaten was son David, who is hospitalized with head lacerations and a fractured hand. The family's attorney calls it a case of police abuse. They were all dressed up for, 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 a, for a riot. There was no riot, and they couldn't go home without having to take a few trophies with them. But the sheriff said his men showed up in riot gear because earlier the partygoers pelted deputies with bricks and bottles. He said several deputies were injured by the partiers. Based upon the evidence of, of force used, uh, deadly force used by some of the people who were present against the deputies, uh, that I think this entire incident was handled very professionally uh, with great restraint. He said the deputies first arrived on the scene because of a neighbor's complaint that the party was too noisy. Meanwhile, the family is considering suing the sheriff's department for violating their civil rights. Ann Curry, Channel 2 Action News, Cerritos. Block is defending his deputies against charges of brutality tonight. Members of a Cerritos family insist they were handcuffed and beaten when deputies broke up a bridal shower Saturday night. A neighbor shot home video of the confrontation. Members of the Dole family say they'd already agreed to end their party when deputies surrounded their house and simply started beating people up. My dad got hit in the side and they handcuffed us and they still kept hitting us. But deputies say they responded to a call of fighting in the street and were greeted with rocks and bottles when they arrived. Today, Sheriff Sherman Block showed off some of the blood-stained rocks, which he says injured 10 of his deputies in this incident. Based upon the evidence of, of force used, a deadly force used by some of the people who were present against the deputies, uh, that I think this entire incident was handled very professionally uh, with great restraint. Locke says he'll continue to investigate the incident. Meanwhile, the Dole family says it will plan to file a lawsuit for violation of civil rights. Now, the bride was brokenhearted when her bridal shower party turned into a brawling wrestling match. But to the rescue, the bride's sister, Mount Fiji of GLOW, the Lady Wrestlers Union. That's next. The shower party was supposed to be a celebration second only to the wedding reception itself. A bride and groom and scores of friends. One of them, the bride's sister, the somewhat famous Mount Fiji, one of TV's female wrestlers. Then the cops came and all hell broke loose. It was supposed to be a happy bridal shower, but it turned into this nightmare of sirens, riot cops and violent clashes with party revelers. The hell broke loose Saturday night when police converged on a suburban Los Angeles home after neighbors complained about the noise. When they were clubbing me, they were saying, 
you know, they were using foul language and just get this girl out of the street. A bride, a groom, and the bride's sister, and dozens of friends say this home video shot by a neighbor shows how the L.A. boys in blue turn their joyous celebration into a bloody wrestling match. Strangely enough, what the cops didn't seem to know at first was that they had locked horns with none other than Mount Fiji. Now, Mount Fiji, in case you don't know, is the biggest star of TV's glow. And that stands for TV's Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling. And they're about as tough as they come. Mountain Fiji described for reporters how the cops took her on with more force than her ring opponents usually use. When it was all over, Mount Fiji and 33 other guests were in handcuffs under arrest. Now the cops tell a different story. Considering the magnitude of the situation, the numbers of people involved, uh, that the deputies uh, reacted in a very orderly fashion. They won't need a minister for the wedding if it goes anything like the shower party. They'll need a referee. They need everything in sight. With us from Los Angeles, the Dole family. That's David Dole on the left. Uh, his sister, Emily Dole, who is known as Mountain Fiji on television's pro wrestling circuit. Melinda Dole is the bride-to-be, and the groom is Terry Pow Pow. Nice to have you with us, the groom-to-be. Uh, David Dole, how did you break your hand? Um, just, I... Uh, when I first walked out there to speak to the officer in charge after I called 911 for uh, assistance and the lady informed me over the line to go out there and ask for the officer in charge. As I walked outside, um, I said, you know, loudly, I said, um, can I please speak to, off to the officer in charge? And uh, as soon as that happened, he just started swinging the baton and everything on my sister and on one of my other cousins, Tino. And I just covered myself, that, and they just hit me right on the knuckle and broke it. Broke my hand and um, fractured my skull. They um, split my forehead, and it was just uncalled for. And what did you do when you saw that, Emily? I couldn't do anything. Um, I was helpless. I was, uh, I was cussed at. I was humiliated. I was told to stay away from my family, to stay at a certain place. If not, I would be abused. When they handcuffed me, they kept hitting me. And when it was noted that someone from, uh, that all of us that when we were handcuffed, when it was noticed that we were being videotaped, the, uh, that's when the officers informed each themselves that they were being videotaped and they uh, tried to ease up, but still it continued the abuse and the, and the brutality and I was cussed at and they would not let me get to, to my family and they, they went on me too, they were going, they were just, abusing me. Now Melinda and yeah. Terry, yes. uh, the party was in your honor. Uh, you were not arrested, either one of you. Do you think you weren't arrested okay. because you were the honored guests? I... Terry wasn't I present. wasn't there at the party. Well that's obvious why you weren't arrested, okay. Right. Uh, how about you, uh, Melinda? They didn't even know who I was. They just told me to get out and I just got out. First of all, they told me to put my hands against the wall, burst into our home, and I put my hands against the wall and then they just picked randomly out of here, get out of here, get out of here. And when I, as I walked out the door, that's when I see my brother, Drake. <laughs> they were dragging David and he was bleeding on his head and I told them my brother needs to get out of here before we arrest you. Let me ask, let me ask you this, all of you. You think their, your reputation might have uh, given him, given them a kind of uh, a reason to uh, come after you? As far as me as a... As, as a professional wrestler? Speech. I hope not, because I hope they take in consideration that I'm out there helping with the children, and I tell kids to stay out of drugs. I tell them to respect the law, go to school, you know, listen to your parents, and, you know, and authoritative figures as far as teachers and a police officer and everything, and then they do this. I hope not. I, I never, you know, I, I don't know, but, but when I was arrested, and there was a lot of connotations and verbal abuse and uh, slander and, and just uh, racial slurs that were... And I just try to say, I can't believe I'm hearing this. And I was hearing it and I was seeing it, not done to me, but also my family and, and the guests, and I couldn't believe it. Was there, said, any, I, was there ever any attempt at an apology later on at the police station? No, sir. They no. never changed their attitude one bit? No, sir. Uh, the last thing I remember is before we left is that... Uh, 
we've conquered mountain Fiji. And they looked at us and said, don't, don't have these wild parties anymore. And I just, I didn't say one word. I just bowed my head down and just shook my head and went, what can I say? What about your neighbors? Do they agree with you? They were 100%. We have got nothing but, uh, you know, uh, support from them. They have called us to wish us well. If there's anything that we want, you know, to need, to please call them and don't feel, uh, you know, uh, you know, just uh, back off or anything. Just and you've never had them. any trouble with the sheriff's deputies before? No, sir. And it's a, it was a quiet neighborhood in Los Angeles? Yes, very quiet, yes. I thank you all very much, and good thank luck you, to you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. We'll find out what happened. Well, there was a large demonstration today in the front of the Carson Sheriff's Station. Residents there are protesting what they call the brutality used by deputies in a recent incident. Now, Fernell Chapman is in the newsroom with more on this demonstration. Fernell? It was an orderly and peaceful demonstration. Those who participated say they want and demand the same kind of police service that's provided in non-minority areas of L.A. County. The protest involved more than 100 demonstrators outside the Sheriff Department's Carson substation. The protest targeted what some community leaders call a trend of police brutality against a specific ethnic group, Samoans. That, they say, cannot and will not be tolerated. When one family's hurts, you know, like uh, the, the Dole family, it's, uh, it's represent a community of Samoans. And we're here to uh, sympathize with them and associate with them in uh, the sufferings that they've been through. The protest was sparked by this Sheriff Department raid in Cerritos last week, as shown in this home video. Residents claim riot-equipped deputies used excessive force in arresting 30 people at a wedding shower. As a Simone community, we feel that, uh, that there was uh, police uh, brutality involved. The uh, police, including uh, some members of the public, uh, have some misconceptions about uh, Samoans, uh, racist misconceptions. Uh, through today's demonstration, uh, we're willing to stand up for our rights, our constitutional rights, and uh, also that we are not violent. Sheriff Block recently denied allegations of misconduct by his deputies, saying they simply reacted appropriately after being bombarded with rocks and bottles. Samoan community leaders say they've scheduled a meeting with the Sheriff's Department officials tomorrow to discuss allegations of brutality. Sheriff Block, meanwhile, is expected to have more to say about that Cerritos incident at his monthly media briefing scheduled for Wednesday. Now back to the studio. Brunel, thank you very much. Tonight, the Los Angeles Samoan community is pointing a finger at Sheriff Sherman Block and demanding justice over an act of alleged police brutality. About 200 protesters carried signs and sang hymns in front of the sheriff's substation in Carson today, hoping to get Block to take action against deputies involved in the incident 10 days ago. 34 people were arrested after sheriff's deputies responded to a noise complaint about a bridal shower. The deputies were reportedly met with a shower of rocks and bottles when they responded to the call. Four of those arrested suffered broken bones. 24 suffered cuts and bruises after being handcuffed and allegedly forced to the ground by officers in riot gear. The shadow of the Rodney King case hangs over a Norwalk courtroom tonight. Closing arguments were presented today in a criminal trial with uncanny parallels. The centerpiece of the case is an amateur videotape shot by a neighbor, a videotape that led to charges of brutality. Dave Bryan was in court today when the tape was played. The key evidence is this amateur videotape. It shows L.A. Sheriff's deputies swinging away with their nightsticks after they were called to the home of a Samoan family in Cerritos when a bridal shower party got out of hand. Deputies say they were confronted by dozens of large people, including 350-pound Emily Dole, a wrestler who goes by the professional name of Mount Fiji, seen standing here in the street. The tape was shot on February 11, 1989, two years before anyone but his family knew who Rodney King was. And the outcome in the assault trial of three young Samoan men will likely be decided by the jury's perceptions of it. That became clear as defense attorney Garo Mardorosian presented closing arguments today. The camera doesn't blink. The camera doesn't forget. What the tape shows is something that can't be refuted. The three men on trial are charged with attacking sheriff's deputies using rocks in this slab of brick. 
denting their riot helmets and causing numerous injuries. Prosecutors say that's the big difference from the Rodney King case. But defense attorneys argue that the similarities are unmistakable. Police brutality, a cover-up and code of silence, even racist remarks. They called my clients things like coconut head, things like, are you a Buddha head, are you a coconut head, uh, you big Simone cow. There is one other similarity to the Rodney King affair. The incident here in Cerritos also touched off public protests, although on a much smaller scale, about the way law enforcement officers treat minorities. The focus in this case was the county's 60,000 member Samoan community. Rodney King's name came up in court today when prosecutor Kevin Young closed his case by warning the jury not to be fooled by phony comparisons. Now according to the party goers, there was never any force used by them. They were compliant whenever the officers asked them to get down and they were just plain beaten by the officers. All of Rodney King. But outside court, Young admitted it's hard to get the jury to focus on the case at hand with the constant presence of the tape and the air of police brutality in the age of Rodney King. In Norwalk, I'm Dave Bryan. The case against the three young men will likely go to the jury tomorrow. As for their lawsuit alleging brutality by the sheriff's department, that trial won't start until this one is finished. We're present at a party raided by sheriff's deputies. Nine deputies were injured in that raid. Three other Samoans were recently found not guilty in the same incident. They presented a home videotape arguing that deputies beat the partygoers without provocation, injuring themselves in the process. Sheriff Block today, not impressed by that verdict. Uh, the Rodney King incident uh, is having a significant impact on both criminal and civil litigation uh, in this community today. Some of the Samoans have filed a multi-million dollar damage suit. It will go to court after the criminal proceedings end. This is Action News at 5 with Ann Martin and Jerry Dunphy. Trial got underway today in a police brutality case that involved a bridal shower. Six years ago, L.A. Sheriff's deputies in riot gear broke up a bridal shower in Cerritos, as this home video shows. More than 30 guests, mostly Samoan Americans, were hurt. A lawyer for the victims said today the deputies terrorized and brutalized them for no reason. But the sheriff's lawyer says neighbors had been complaining about loud noise and that party growers, party goers, threw bricks. You're watching the number one station for news and information in Southern California. Channel 7 KABC-TV Los Angeles with Harold Green, Lisa McCree, Johnny Mountain with weather, Todd Donahoe Sports, and the entire Eyewitness News team. Now, Eyewitness News at 5. It's being called the largest civil rights lawsuit in L.A. County history. The Los Angeles County Sheriff's Department now facing a $20 million lawsuit arising from a melee at a bridal shower in Cerritos back in 18, 1989. That's 1989. Fred Anderson was in court today for opening statements. The lawsuit is being brought by 38 of the party goers, mostly Samoan Americans. Today in the courtroom of Judge Robert Devich, their attorneys lay the groundwork for a case involving false arrest, false imprisonment, and malicious prosecution. A key piece of evidence will be a videotape shot by a neighbor a tape the plaintiffs believe will back up their claim that the party at the Cerritos home of Arthur Dole was a peaceful one. Garo Martirosian is attorney for the Dole family. Well, it's a simple case of uh, deputies coming to a, uh, a bridal shower uh, with family members and elderly folks and kids and uh, going wild and beating everybody in sight, uh, women, children, uh, pregnant women, uh, for no good reason. Attorney Paul Paquette is defending the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. The defense in the case will involve evidence that these individuals had assaulted these peace officers. Uh, nine peace officers were injured and that these uh, individuals resisted arrest very violently and they were taken into custody and properly so. A jury acquitted three of the Samoan Americans of felony riot charges and the DA dropped misdemeanor charges against four others including daughter Emily Dole a professional wrestler known as Mount Fiji. It's just to show to the public that the sheriffs were wrong, that what they did to my family and I was uh, totally out of hand, 
and that uh, police brutality does exist. The attorneys are going to take some time to battle this one out. They estimate the trial will run between two and four months. Fred Anderson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, downtown Los Angeles. In another courtroom, a six-year-old argument over a raid at a Samoan American wedding reception. The multi-million dollar suit against the L.A. County sheriffs is one of the largest in state history. Art Navarro has that story. Beat the women there. They beat uh, the men. They beat everybody. My father. We follow what they told us to do. Can you do any harm or any fight back? I feel like they've taken away my dignity. They, they ruined my name. The Dole's nightmare began here the night of February 11, 1989. There was a bridal shower going on inside when sheriff's deputies responded to a loud music complaint. The matter was settled without any problems. But an hour later, sheriff's deputies returned in full riot gear, and the situation got ugly. Neighbors allegedly had complained the party had turned into a riot. The family denies this and contends overzealous deputies used excessive force, ruthlessly beating them and their guests with batons and flashlights. The sheriff's department would not comment on the case, but has maintained force was necessary when the partygoers resisted arrest and assaulted the officers. 35 people were eventually taken into custody. When I saw it, I couldn't believe it. And I thought, you know, any time now, maybe tomorrow, maybe the next day, we're going to hear apologies. At the very least, an apology. It didn't happen. Oh, are you kidding? Out of the 35 arrests, three people were eventually charged with criminal conduct. A Superior Court jury found them not guilty. Now, Matarassian is seeking $20 million on behalf of 38, mostly Samoan Americans, who were suing the Sheriff's Department, claiming police brutality. Can $20 million buy happiness? No, you don't buy happiness. I want justice, and I want the public to know that this can happen to anybody. Maybe never stop it from happening completely, but if you can reduce it by one or two, then we've done our job. The civil trial is expected to last three to four months. Art Navarro, Real News. Of watching Channel 4 News, coverage you can count on. Now, live in Southern California, this is Channel 4 News at 6. A neighbor testified today that he watched sheriff deputies beat a woman in the street during a raid six years ago at a bridal shower in Cerritos. Now, these are home video pictures of the raid. Deputies arrived in riot gear after getting calls that a party had gotten out of hand. Some 38 people, most of them Samoan Americans, are suing the L.A. Sheriff's Department over this raid. The Sheriff's Department claims that the raid was handled by the book. And now, Channel 5 News at 10 with Hal Fishman, Jan Carl, Larry McCormick, and Stu Nahan. Here's Hal Fishman. A sheriff's raid becomes the target of a $20 million lawsuit while at home video. Locally, the first witness took the stand today in a $20 million police brutality lawsuit against the L.A. County Sheriff's Department. The lawsuit claims that a family bridal shower in February of 89 turned violent when deputies in riot gear assaulted the guests. The deputies, seen here in a home videotape of the incident, had been responding to complaints of a raucous party. Authorities insist the officers were protecting themselves against the guests, who they say were assaulting them. Today's witness testified that he saw one of the deputies beat a woman in the street. The deputies arrested dozens of the guests the night in question, but all of those charged eventually were cleared of wrongdoing or were acquitted uh, by jury. ABC TV Los Angeles, number one for news and information. This is Eyewitness News with Steve Wolford, Christine Lund, Dallas Rains Weather, and Rick Lozano Sports. Now live, Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 4. The largest civil rights lawsuit in Los Angeles County history has come to an end. It began six years ago when sheriff's deputies raided a bridal shower in Cerritos. Eyewitness News reporter Fred Anderson is live at the courthouse. He is downtown and he's got complete details on today's verdict for us. Fred. Well, it was a complicated case, Christine. It was a Samoan family having a bridal uh, shower that night in Cerritos. The sheriffs raided the bridal shower. A melee, wild melee followed unbeknownst to the sheriff's deputies. Somebody was video.
videotaping that melee, and the uh, result is today a lawsuit that was settled in court. Twenty-five of the sheriff's deputies were found uh, guilty in this civil suit, and the family was, of course, emotional and victorious. The trial in the courtroom of Judge Robert Devich took just over four months. It took the court clerk more than two hours to read the verdicts in the 36 counts this afternoon. The jury found as many as the 25 L.A. County Sheriff's deputies that had responded to the scene had violated the civil rights of several members of the Dole family as well as others attending the bridal shower. The charges included false arrest without probable cause. The jury also agreed that the deputies had used unreasonable, unnecessary, and excessive force. Did any defendant deputy conspire with other persons, whether or not a defendant, to deprive plaintiff Arthur Edwin Dole of a constitutional right? Answer, yes. Was there an overt act by any deputy in furtherance of such conspiracy that caused said plaintiff an injury or damage? Answer, yes. Very fair trial, very fair action, and I'm so happy it's over. We've been waiting for six and a half years for this. And it's come to the con uh, conclusion and it's the right decision. I'm so happy for that. <laughs> This is not the end of this trial. On Wednesday, the attorneys and the families and the representatives uh, uh, defending the L.A. County Sheriff's Department will gather back in this courtroom again to go into now the damages phase. It was is a damage phase that could result in a multi-million dollar charge against the County of Los Angeles and the Sheriff's Department. The uh, defense attorney or the, the plaintiff's attorney, Garo Madarosian, says he is extremely gratified to see after six years this result. The attorney for the sheriffs, uh, is Paul Paquette. He would only say that he is, uh, he is very, very surprised at the outcome. Reporting live from downtown Los Angeles, Fred Anderson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. KBC TV Los Angeles, number one for news and information. This is Eyewitness News with Harold Green, Lisa McCree, Dallas Rains Weather, and Todd Donahoe Sports. Now live, Channel 7 Eyewitness News at 11. There is other news tonight. Los Angeles County's largest civil rights lawsuit ever has ended with an historic verdict. Today, sheriff's deputies were found guilty of false arrest and other violations against 36 people at a rowdy bridal shower. Eyewitness News reporter Fred Anderson has details. A jury has now declared that L.A. County Sheriff's deputies used unreasonable, unnecessary, and excessive force when they raided that Samoan American home six years ago. The raid during a bridal shower at the Cerritos home was captured on home video by a neighbor. After a four-month trial, it took more than two hours to record the verdict, and several of the 36 plaintiffs in the lawsuit wept as they heard the verdicts in their favor. While the deputy's defense had no comment other than to express surprise at the verdict, plaintiff's attorney, Garo Martirosian, popped a bottle of champagne to celebrate the victory with his clients tonight. This is uh, just yet another example of uh, a jury that takes its job seriously, a judge that does what's right in, uh, in taking the time, some 20 weeks, and allowing the jury to deliberate as long as it needed. A criminal court jury earlier acquitted three of the Samoan Americans of felony riot charges and misdemeanor charges against four others were dropped, including Emily Dole, an actress who wrestled professionally as Mount Fiji. Their six-year-long day in court has been hard on the family, she says. A traumatic one, uh, very traumatic emotionally, and it's going to be with us for the rest of our lives, uh, but we have to just deal with it and try to take one day at a time. This case isn't over yet. They'll be back in court on Wednesday when this same jury that decided against the Sheriff's Department will decide now how much it's going to cost in dollars and cents, a case that's expected to run into the many millions of dollars. Fred Anderson, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. This is Action News at 11 with Michael Tuck and Ann Martin. Meantime, an L.A. County jury today ruled sheriff's deputies used excessive force against the Southland family during a raid that was videotaped by a next-door neighbor. Here's that damaging evidence. You can see, if you look closely, deputies storming the place and making arrests at a bridal shower back in 1989. The family wants justice and a lot of money. They're suing the county for $20 million in damages. Today's verdict was only the first step. There's a lot to go on yet, and this is just the first phase. We have at least uh, two phases, maybe even three to go, and uh, this is six years of uh, belief in the system. Now, phase two, that's when the jury will determine how much to award in damages will begin on Wednesday.